Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm David. Today's video is going to be all about this lighting permit here. I'm going to be editing together some of the footage I got when I was back at home and I actually built it. Before that though, a tiny bit of admin. First things first, for this video in particular, I've managed to lose a bit of footage. So I've lost um, bits and bobs from when I built the lighting permit. I've also lost some recent footage as well. No, I haven't lost the recent footage. Um, I can remember deleting it thinking it was on my computer when it wasn't, and that really concerns the next video, which is laying the cork, and we'll get onto that, as I said, next time. Uh, I'll have to edit my way out of that. Some other things, um, recently I've been trying to keep up the tempo of the videos, trying to upload semi-regularly, not to any strict timetable, but just trying to get work done on the layout and show you guys, because I know a lot of you now do like keeping up with the projects, and I get some nice kind comments from you guys, so I really do appreciate it. And of course, thank you all for subscribing. Um, next week, actually tomorrow, I am travelling across to Cornwall, well, across and down, um, to see my girlfriend and her family, as they've just moved house from Shropshire, uh, where we both grew up, down to Cornwall. Um, it's sort of a lifestyle change, more than anything, and something her family's wanted for a long time. And I'm going down there to do some sort of handiwork, put up shelves, help unpack boxes, as well, of course, see my girlfriend for a week for Easter. Um, we are in a Covid bubble, um, we've been sort of swapping houses since the second lockdown, particularly as my girlfriend's had a few medical problems um, from um, through the lockdown, so it's just been great to be able to sort of be in a bubble and support each other. But with that said though, what I have done is I've filmed, of course, today's video, which will be on the lighting permit, the next video, which will be on laying the cork and getting ready um, the track plan, which you can just about see here. And then finally there will be a video just before I get back on what's down that end of the layout, which I will keep secret for a little while, um, and you'll see what that is soon when it comes out, probably next weekend. Okay, so let's start today's video properly. So, what is a lighting helmet? Well, it, it's this. Um, so, most people you have the baseboard and the back scene, and then you can rely on your room lighting if you wish, or you can have LEDs or something permanently mounted above the layout. But for a portable layout like this, what you really need is a structure that provides lighting attached to the layout. So with this layout, it's in my bedroom, which isn't the lightest of places. Most of the light comes from that window, which is of course behind the back scene, so it doesn't really get onto this bit of the baseboard. Which means it's more beneficial to light it from the front. Obviously it's a portable layout and I'm in my uni house so I can't exactly just be hanging lights from the ceiling. So I thought a lighting permit was the easiest answer. What I've got here is just plywood um, and a lot of 3D printed parts which we'll get into a little bit. Um, but you can make them out of all sorts of things. What they allow is you to control the lighting exactly. So I've got this little dial here. I can turn the lighting up and down on the layout. And it means wherever I take this layout I know that the lighting is going to be the same, particularly good for colour recreation, so I know when I do some scenery, if I paint it underneath this light, it will always be seen underneath these LEDs, so it should look pretty much the same whenever anybody sees it. Okay, so as I said, I've lost some footage from when this uh, was built, but there is just, there's pretty much enough to make this video, um, and what I'll do is at the end, after I've shown you all the footage I've recovered, from when I filmed this video, I can give you a tour of the helmet in its current state. So we'll go back a few weeks now to when I was at home, when I started building this. We started with the bare um, plywood, as well as testing the LED strips, and then sort of starting to assemble it. And then I'll bring you back here and show you what I've done. Okay, so I've moved all the materials to one side there, and what I'm going to do to begin with is just test the light strips. Just double check they're working as you'd expect them to. So I can see this is the warm white one, and that goes nice and bright, and I can dim it down as well. And then I'll test the cool white one. Yep, that's working perfectly. So what I've got here is um, five meters, I think it is, of each type of strip. Okay, so the first step, I've got the two three foot strips here. And these are marked so I know which way round they go. And we're going to have a hinge on the front. 
as well as an identical hinge on the back side. So if I just scooch that there. So what I'll do is the hinge on the front um, will act as a completely normal hinge. I'm thinking of putting a blob of solder on the bottom so you can't remove the pin. This is a split pin hinge like the rest of the hinges that hold the layout boards together. So this is going to act like a normal hinge and allow me to fold the entire lighting rig in half for storage. The hinge on the back is there to hold it in its open position, hold it completely straight. So what you'll do is pull the pin out of the back hinge and that should allow you to fold the lighting board in half. So what I'm going to do is mark up some holes, drill them out and I've got these nice brass, I think they're M5 bolts off the top of my head just to bolt the hinges on either side and then you should be able to see what I mean a little better. Okay so I've got this hinge bolted on or the pair of hinges bolted on now you should be able to see what I mean if I pull out the rear pin with a little bit of effort there, probably need pliers you can see the entire lighting pelmet will now fold in half neatly and this can be stored away and then if I put it back together put the pin in it's now back in one piece ok so the next stage is to look at either end how I'm going to mount it so I want this bit of softwood mounted here now I can't mount the softwood to the back scene just yet as I'm waiting for the second 3D printed bracket to be done what I can do is mount the pelmet itself onto the softwood poles so if you look at the top of the pole here what I want to do is put this 3D printed bracket on here which should go down with a bit of a hammer and then we've got this mount which can slide off and this will be glued to the pelmet itself so then what we can do is slide the bracket on and off OK, so it's now Monday afternoon, I've got a break between lectures and I thought I'd just show you what I've been getting up to. So I've got these brackets 3D printed that hold the posts um, and I've got the uh, pelmet test fitted on at the moment. It's very floppy at the moment as it hasn't got any of the 3D printed parts on it yet. But if I uh, take this off, like so, you can see how the entire helmet comes off the top there and then these posts just slide out they're a friction fit from the brackets there at the side so these are just screwed into the framework they're also glued on and they just provide a nice slot that very snugly fits the wooden battens you can also see down there um, <laughs> there's a bit of a mess what I've been doing I've been testing the LED strips a little more um, so what I've done is temporarily wired the pair together just to double check the power supply actually powers them both at the same time um, as the power supply only came with 5 meters of LEDs and I'm effectively going to be using 10 meters of LEDs uh, now obviously I will have some excess left over so this is a sort of worst case scenario powering the entirety of the two strips and it seems to be alright, there's no major flickering or anything that you can experience it'll be interesting to see how long I can leave them on for um, it might end up that eventually I do need a bigger power supply if, the, uh, if it can't handle both strips of LEDs for a long period of time but we shall see um, the reason it's all in a mess at the moment is they do recommend if you're going to be testing LEDs for any longer than a few minutes you actually unravel them so they can get air around the LEDs LEDs do heat up um, a lot of people will tell you that LEDs stay cool but no, when you've got a whole lot of surface mounted LEDs they will heat up quite a bit unless they're unrolled and get some air around them what I've done is I've drawn a line all the way down the uh, the lighting pelmet here just to show me where I've got to glue these in place and I'm going to secure these with a lot of hot glue and hopefully they'll add some structure to the lighting pelmet 
and then I can get on with wiring up the LEDs themselves. Okay, so I've now got all of the 3D printed light brackets glued to the back of the uh, pelmet here. You can see it's taken out pretty much all of the wobble in the wood itself. Most of it's now in the joint or joints, uh, uh, the three joints, one at either end and one in the middle. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's gained a lot of strength and it should be perfectly fine now. It really doesn't need to support anything other than its own weight. Um, a little bit of flop is okay. There's very little chance of it sagging in the middle because obviously we've got the full width of the plywood. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. What I've also done is I've ground down the nuts and bolts that hold the hinges on. So on the front I've ground them to flats instead of having... Um, they had flathead screws. Um, and that will just stop them colliding when it's folded in half. It now allows it to fold in half much neater. So the heads were sticking out of the hinges quite far. And now they're almost flush. Then on the back I've just ground down the bolts a little bit. Um, just to keep them out of the way of where the wiring's going to go. Okay, it's time to install a load of LEDs. Okay, so I've got the first strip of LEDs in. Um, the top row all along the entire six foot helmet. Um, these LED strips are really nice. You can cut them along the designated cut points, which I have done, and they're sticky back. I might come along and put some hot glue in a couple of places just to make sure they never fall off, but the sticky back stuff on these strips seems to be quite strong. Again, it will vary where you get them from, um, as you can get these quite cheap. But this does have 3M backing on it, so yeah, quite nice. So what I've used here is these 3D printed um, angles that I made so I've got one angle which is this face here which will house two strips one warm white and there's room for a cool white one and that's angled down towards the back of the board and then this face here the lower face if, I don't know if you can see the lower face which is this part has two channels the same and these will be angled more towards the front of the board, so I should get some even distribution. I'm going to alternate warm white, cool white, warm white, cool white. And that should uh, get a nice sort of daylight colour, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Okay, then I'm going to keep going, and I'll come back once I've got all of the LED strips attached. Okay, and that was about all of the footage I managed to recover. Um, I'm not sure if the rest of it, it could be on my hard drive lurking somewhere. I've probably changed SD cards a couple times and I've either reformatted one when I shouldn't have done or I've just put it somewhere really strange on my computer. I have had a look around the various hard drives I've got in my computer and I can't find the footage. So uh, yeah, we'll just have to go without. So obviously the next step after the last bit of footage I shot um, was to install the rest of the LEDs. So the first thing I did then is just put all four strips into the 3D printed bracket and I've alternated them warm white, cool white um, twice and as I said some of them shine towards the front of the layout here and some shine down towards the back there. Those are held in in a couple places with lines of hot glue just to make them more secure and I'm really happy with how solid they are attached. The next stage was to wire it up so in the middle here what I've done is looped between all of the LED strips so they're in parallel and um, so that means they're all getting 12 volts comes in down at this end through one of the LED strips then in the middle it branches out and goes in parallel to the rest of them. Uh, these LED strips are actually wired in parallel themselves if that makes sense so each set of three LEDs in the resistor is in parallel so they're sort of just individual blocks of three LEDs all wired together in parallel. Um, I won't I won't bother digging this hole any deeper. The next stage then is to attach a power socket. So just down here I've got a normal 12 volt socket which allows me to unplug and plug in the lights. And what I've used is this um, adapter that actually came with the LEDs and this has got a dimmer on it. Now I can remove this if I want to get a simple wiring job but I quite like being able to turn the lights up and down. And that really is how simple the wiring is. No major structural changes to any of the pelmet, it still just lifts off of here 
and it's held down by gravity so you can just lift it off and it's sort of um, it's got a nice 3d printed joint there uh, using interlocking triangles so it is quite tight it's a nice friction fit what I have done though is I've printed this part here which what that allows me to do is when it's folded in half I can slide this on the end and it actually caps it off nicely and holds it as one solid folded piece and I'm yeah I'm really happy with that as well the next stage is from here obviously this needs painting um, I'll probably paint the whole palmet black and what I'd like to do is probably add a nameplate or a BR totem or something to this to make it look nice it really does frame the layout nicely as well as lighting up the scene it sort of creates like a picture frame across the front of the layout which is a really nice effect again thank you so much for subscribing thanks for watching my videos and commenting below I really do enjoy the conversation with you guys next time as I said I'll talk about how I installed this cork here and the back scene this is an IDE back scene and we'll talk about that more in the next video until then bye for now